This is the story of Monsters, Inc. To play the story right now, press the flashing forward button. You can move through the story by using the forward and back buttons. You can switch between playing the story or reading it yourself by clicking the mode button. Click the pause button to make the story pause or run. You can choose which scene to play by using the scene selector. You can quit at any time by pressing the quit button. You can choose your language by using the language selector. So press the flashing forward button and let's begin now. In the dark bedroom of a little boy, the closet door creaked open. The boy snapped awake as a huge, scary monster crept up to his bed and spread its arms wide, preparing to roar. But the boy's scream scared the monster, and it staggered back and fell to the floor. Suddenly, the lights came on and the bedroom wall opened up. The boy turned out to be just a robot, and the monster was a trainee. Monster Bile was learning to scare children at Monsters, Inc., the largest scream processing factory in Monstropolis. Miss Flint, the scare instructor, turned to the class of trainees. Can anyone tell me Mr. Bile's big mistake? Mm. Mr. Bile had left the closet door open. And leaving the door open is the worst mistake any employee can make because... It could let in a child. <gasps> the trainees spun around to see Mr. Waternoose, the crab-like five-eyed president of Monsters, Inc. at the back of the room. There is nothing more toxic or deadly than a human child. A single touch could kill you. Meanwhile, the company's best scarer, a huge, hairy, blue-spotted monster named James P. Sullivan, or Sully, <laughs> for short, was walking to work with his friend, Mike Wazowski. Mike was a little green ball of a monster with one enormous eye. Mike wanted to drive his new car, but Sully disagreed. Mikey, there's a scream shortage. You see, monsters captured the screams of children and used them to power their world. But kids weren't as easy to scare as they used to be. Mike and Sully arrived at the factory for work. It was a big day for Sully because he was about to break the all-time scare record. They crossed the lobby to the receptionist, Celia, who was also Mike's girlfriend. Oh, schmoopsie-poo, googly bear. It was Celia's birthday, and Mike was taking her to a fancy sushi restaurant that night to celebrate. I will see you at quitting time and not a minute later. Okay, sweetheart. Sully and Mike crossed to their workstation on the scare floor the busy room where all the scaring in the factory took place. Mike slipped a card key into a slot and a door emerged from a huge overhead vault and dropped into place in front of them. At the next station, a lizard-like monster named Randall made his preparations. Randall was the company's second best scarer, but he was determined to take the lead. Sully waved to him. Hey, may the best monster win. I plan to. Red lights lit up above all the doors to show they were active. Woo! Mike cheered Sully on as he opened his That's door right. and crossed into a child's room. You're the boss, you're the boss, you're the big hairy boss. Sullivan kept his lead. Randall's assistant, Fungus, 
turned to his boss. You're still behind, Randall. Just get me another door! Suddenly, an alarm sounded. 2319! We have a 2319! Another monster, George, had come out of his door with a human sock stuck to his back. Get it off! Get it off! Agents from the Child Detection Agency, or CDA, swarmed onto the scare floor. They knocked poor George to the ground, picked off the sock, and blew it up. George was disinfected in a shower and shaved clean. Mr. Waternoose was not pleased. An entire scare floor out of commission. What else can go wrong? Despite the temporary setback, Sully still had a good day. Another day like this and that scare record's in the bag. Mike headed out quickly. Ooh, the love boat is about to set sail. Mm -mm. Just then, Roz, the slug-like dispatcher, stopped him. Hello, Wazowski. I'm sure you filed your paperwork correctly. For once. Mike was caught. He hadn't filed it, and Celia was waiting. But Sully jumped in and offered to <laughs> file the paperwork for him. At my desk, Sully. When Sully returned to the empty scare floor, he discovered a lone door that had accidentally been left behind. The door's red light was on. Sully peered into the child's bedroom. No monsters there. But then he turned around to find a little girl holding his tail. <laughs> Quickly, he put the girl back in her room and took off. In the locker room, he found that the girl was still clinging to his back. Kitty! Sully scooped the girl into a duffel bag and ran back to the scare floor. But Randall was there sending the girl's door back to the vault. Sully couldn't get her back to her room. Sully took the duffel bag and rushed to the crowded restaurant where Mike and Celia were dining. Get out of here, you're ruining everything. Look in the bag. Mike looked, but it was too late. The kid was out of the bag. Bill! Ah! A kid! Panic diners fled the restaurant as CDA agents arrived. Mike and Sully snatched up the kid and ran. Mike looked back. The CDA were already taking Celia away. Michael? Michael! Well, I don't think that date could have gone any worse. The terrified monsters took the girl back to their apartment. She ran around happily until she grabbed a one-eyed teddy bear and Mike objected. <gasps> hey, hey, that's it. No one touches little Mikey. And he grabbed the teddy back. Her scream made the lights in the apartment surge brightly. Panicked, Mike ran to the window and pulled the blinds shut. But as he tried to get the bear back to the girl, he slipped, flew through the air, and landed the in a wastebasket. <laughs> Amazingly, her laughter caused all the lights in the whole building to light up and blow out. What was that? I have no idea, but it would be really great if it didn't do it again. <laughs> After a lot of playing, the little girl finally got tired and Sully put her to bed in his room. But as Sully started to leave, she whimpered and pointed to the closet. She showed Sully a picture she had drawn. Hey, that looks like Randall. Randall's your monster. How about I sit here until you fall asleep? Sully comforted her gently until she fell asleep. Then he returned to the living room. Hey, Mike. This might sound crazy, but I don't think that kid's dangerous. 
Sully figured the best plan was to get the girl back to her room through her closet door at Monsters, Inc. The next day, he disguised her in a little monster costume and took her back to the factory. Sully, a mop, a couple of lights, and some chair fabric. I'm not going to fool anyone. Loch Ness, Bigfoot, the abominable snowman. They all got one thing in common, pal. Banishment. We can be next. Of course, they promptly ran into Mr. Waternoose. Oh. Ah, James. Is this one yours? Ah, uh, actually, that's my uh, cousin's sister's uh, daughter, sir. The guys ducked into the restroom with the girl, and she and Sully played hide-and-seek. Where did she go? Did she turn invisible? Boo! <laughs> but someone was coming. The girl acted scared, and all three hid in a stall just before Randall and Fungus entered. What are we going to do about the child? You, you just get the machine up and running. I'll take care of the kid. And when I find whoever let it out, they're dead. Mike and Sully hurried the girl to their station on the scare floor. Mike swiped a card key and brought a door down from the vault. Mike, that's not her door. Her door was white and it had flowers on it. This isn't Boo's door. Boo? What's Boo? Sully, you're not supposed to name it. Once you name it, you start getting attached to it. Now say goodbye to Where'd it go? What'd you do with it? Sully scanned the floor for her. <gasps> Where is she? Uh, Boo! He took off looking for her. Mike tried to stop him. Somebody else will find the kid. It'll be their problem, not ours! Mike passed Randall in the hall just as Celia approached. Michael Wazowski! <gasps> Oh. Last night was one of the worst nights of my entire life, bar none. I thought you liked sushi. Sushi? Shh. You think Rosie. this is about Never. sushi? Ah. Randall knew that the little girl had appeared at a sushi restaurant, and he guessed that Mike was involved. Where's the kid? You're not pinning this on me. Randall told Mike the scare floor was about to empty out for lunch, and that Boo's door would be in his station. You have until then to put the kid back. Meanwhile, Sully searched everywhere for Boo. He finally spotted her climbing into a garbage can. But CDA agents stopped to get Sully's autograph just as some workers appeared and wheeled off the can. Sully ran up in time to see the workers tip the can down the trash chute, not knowing that Bo had already climbed out and toddled off. He raced down to the basement where the trash was processed and watched horrified as it was smashed into a cube by a giant compactor. Mike caught up to Sully, crying and cradling the garbage cube in his arms. I can still hear her little voice. Boo was with a group of daycare children and their teacher. Boo! The delighted Sully picked Boo up and hugged her tightly. Okay, Sully, that's enough. Let's go. On the deserted scare floor, Mike spotted Boo's door set up in Randall's station. There it is, just like Randall said. Mike, what are you thinking? We can't trust Randall, he's after Boo. You want me to prove everything's on the up and up? Fine. Mike marched into Boo's room and began bouncing on her bed. Suddenly, a large box flew up from behind the bed and trapped him. After a moment, Randall peeked out of Boo's room. Sully comforted Boo and they hid as Randall loaded the box containing Mike on a cart and rolled it away. Sully and Boo followed Randall. They caught up with him just as he was strapping Mike into a giant machine while Fungus tinkered with the controls. I am about to revolutionize the scaring industry. 
first I need to know where the kid is, and you're gonna tell me. Say hello to the Scream Extractor. A like huge vacuum-like device descended from the me. ceiling toward Mike's face. No, come on, hey, Randall. Ah! Help, help, help. Sully pulled the machine's plug. Randall went to investigate, and Sully quickly freed Mike and snatched up Fungus. Randall returned to find Fungus in the Scream Extractor. <laughs> what happened? Where's Wazowski? Sully decided to go to Mr. Waternoose about the problem. They found him in the training room with a class of trainees. James! Perfect timing. Before Sully could protest, Mr. Waternoose ushered him into the fake bedroom while Mike held Boo. Come on, come on, what are you waiting for? Roar! Boo watched horrified as Sully was forced to scare the robot child. Boo began to cry, and Sully realized that Boo was truly scared. Boo, it's me. No, 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 it's okay. I was just... Oh, no, don't be scared. Just then, the hood of Boo's costume slipped off. <gasps> the child! Still scared, Boo ran from Sully right into Mr. Waternoose's arms. I'm sorry you boys got mixed up in this, but now we can set everything straight again for the good of the company. Mr. Waternoose brought Mike and Sully to an active door. Uh, sir, that's not her door. I know, I know, it's yours. Ah! and he shoved Mike and Sully through the door and slammed it shut behind them. The two friends found themselves in a snowstorm in the Himalayas. We're in the human world! Oh, what a great idea, going to your old pal Wadanus. Too bad he was in on the whole thing! Sully tried desperately to reopen the door, but it was no use. They were stuck. Suddenly, the Yeti, a huge, hairy monster, appeared. I understand. It ain't easy being banished. The Yeti invited the two distressed monsters back to his cave. The Yeti shared his food, talked about his life, and mentioned a village at the bottom of the mountain. As soon as Sully heard this, he began frantically building a makeshift sled out of the poor Yeti's belongings. Mike was furious. What about us? Ever since that kid came in, you've ignored everything I've said. And now look where we are. Oh, we were about to break the record, Sully. None of that matters now. Boo's in trouble. I think there might be a way to save her. Mike was not interested in risking his life to help her. So Sully grabbed a lantern, hopped on the sled, and sped off down the mountain alone. Ah! Sully found an active closet door in the village and crossed back into Monsters, Inc. He burst onto the scare floor and raced for Randall's secret lab. Boo! Help! Boo was strapped in the chair, the scream extractor inches from her face. As Waternoose and Randall looked on, Sully charged in like a bull and smashed the machine out of Boo's path. He grabbed Boo, and they took off! Uh, stop him! Don't let him get away! Suddenly, Mike showed up and tried to apologize. Sully just dragged him along, with Randall chasing after them. They ran to the scare floor, and Sully grabbed onto a door on its way back to the door vault. Sully, Mike, and Boo clung to the door as it sailed through the enormous vault on a conveyor belt surrounded by doors as far as the eye could see. Just then, they spotted Randall riding on another door straight toward them. Sully shouted, Make her laugh! Mike looked at Boo, then sucked himself in the head. The red lights above their door and all the doors in the vault lit up. 
the trio jumped through the door and found themselves in a house on a beautiful Hawaiian beach. Why couldn't we get banished here? They quickly ran out of the house into a neighbor's house and through another door back into the vault. But Randall was still right behind them. Hurry up! Keep moving! Randall closed in, seized Boo, and disappeared with her into a door. Knowing Sullivan was not far behind, Randall waited, then attacked Sullivan as soon as he appeared in the doorway. You've been number one for too long, Sullivan. Now your time is up. And don't worry, I'll take good care of the kid. Suddenly, Randall's head jerked back. It was Boo pulling him back. Sully was saved and was able to get back into the room. She's not scared of you anymore. <coughs> Looks like you're out of a job. Sully pushed Randall no, no, through a no, door no, no, into no. a rundown trailer in a slump. Mama, another gator got in the house. Another gator? Give me that shovel. Just then, Boo's door rode by, and they jumped on it. But before they could get it open, it lurched off in another direction. What's happening? The door sailed back down toward the scare floor where Mr. Waternoose was waiting for them, surrounded by CDA agents. As the door landed, Mike threw one of Boo's socks at the agents, and they all panicked. In the commotion, Mike took off carrying Boo's costume, and the agents followed him. Sully grabbed Boo's door, and he and Boo ran the other way. Only Mr. Waternoose saw Sully had Boo, and he chased after them alone. Sully ran with Boo to the training room. He quickly put Boo's door in the fake bedroom and hid Boo in the bed to make it look like Boo's room. Mr. Waternoose arrived at the door. She's home now. Just leave her alone. I can't do that. She's seen too much. Eh. I'll kidnap a thousand children before I let this company die, and I'll silence anyone who gets in my way. Suddenly, the lights came on, and the walls opened up. Mike was manning the controls, and Waternoose was caught red-handed. As Mike and Sully watched, CDA agents crossed onto the stage, arrested him, and led him away. Sully used a card key to activate Boo's door. She was delighted to see her room again and showed Sully around. She looked in her closet. Nothing's coming out of your closet to scare you anymore, right? Yeah. Goodbye, Boo. Kitty. Sully quietly stepped into the closet and closed the door behind him. The CDA then shredded Boo's door to prevent future monsters from getting into her room. Sully could never see Boo again. Thanks to Sully and Mike's discovery of the superior power of children's laughter, Monsters, Inc. soon switched from screams to giggles. Sully took over as president and Mike became their best comedian, keeping kids in stitches all day long. But Sully was sad. He missed Boo. One day, Mike surprised him. Hey, Sully, there's something I want to show you. It was Boo's reconstructed door, carefully glued back together. Sully couldn't believe it. He cautiously opened the door.
If you really want to quit, click on the picture of Randall. To play the story again, click on the picture of Mike. Click on Sully to sample more CD read-alongs and other Walt Disney Records products at Disney.com.